but I want us to do the deleted scene. We, we told everyone that, that we were going to cover deleted scene. And I know that some of the fans were a little bit worried this is an April Fool's joke. It's not an April Fool's joke. Uh, when I was a beta reader, as Brandon brought up for Towers of Midnight, uh, this, the scene we're about to play for you, which we had uh, Michael Kramer, we asked uh, Michael to record this and he was kind enough to do that for us. So the scene that we're going to play is one that he's reading. It's a short scene. It was in my beta read document that was sent to me for Towers of Midnight. So what you're going to listen to right now is what I read when I read Towers of Midnight for the first time. So uh, we're gonna play this for you and then Brandon and I are going to come back. Uh, this is, for those that are asking, this is from Towers of Midnight, so it does. Which chapter? Oh, this is, I think, chapter 57. Thanks for bringing that up. This is right at the uh, scene. Uh, for those that are watching, this is going to spoil some things for you, but this is right at the scene where they've, they've come out of the tower of Genji, and this involves Matt, Tom, and Moiraine. So I can't remember, it's like the Supper for Rabbits or something like that is the name of the chapter. If you want to read along, uh, we had Michael include a little bit of what's in the book, maybe the first three sentences that's from the book, then this scene, and then the last sentence or two is from the book. So if you go and listen to this and then go find it, you'll see exactly what I read and you'll have the same experience that I did. So. Um, so here we go. Enjoy uh, this short deleted scene read to you by Michael Kramer. He must have made a face at the thought, for Tom chuckled and Moiraine smiled again. The two of them soon lost interest in sporting with Matt, however, and turned to a soft discussion. That affection in their eyes was true. They did love one another. Light. Hast it. He felt like a man who had brought a hog to a horse race. He turned to make himself scarce and leave the two alone, but he froze. That was no deer in the bushes. It was too tall, too wide. Moraine gasped suddenly. Channeling, she said, leaping to her feet as a bar of something white and brilliant cut through the air toward the camp. Matt cursed, rolling out of the way. It narrowly missed him. An older woman burst from the bushes. She had gray hair set with little ornaments, and she had the ageless face of an Aes Sedai. You, Moraine said. Cadswain. Cadswain cackled, letting loose another bar of balefire, but an unexpected knife thrown by Tom startled her, and she missed Moraine narrowly. She must be one of the Forsaken, Matt cried from beside a log where he'd thrown himself. Forsaken! Cadswain exclaimed. I'm the Dark One! Not for long, Moraine said, casually waving her hand in the air. A gateway split the air right in the middle of Cadswain, chopping her in half. Instead of blood, a dark tar-like substance, stuck with beetles and dead flies, splurted onto the ground. That was a tad easier than I thought it would be, Tom noted. Yes, Moraine said, settling herself beside the fire. But I'm certain it had Matt going for a moment or two. Me? Matt asked. No, she said. The other Matt. M-A-T-T. -T. We should continue what we were doing. Matt scratched his head, but shrugged and continued on his way. He went to scout the area where their gateway was supposed to appear. It had better. They had no supplies, and Matt did not fancy flagging down a ship and riding the long way back to Camelon. Uh, that literally is the scene that I read when I read uh, Towers of Midnight. I know a lot of people in chat are like, this is an April Fool's thing, this is, uh, this is a prank. No, that is, and Brandon can attest, uh, even though you can't see him, Brandon can attest that I read that scene. Um, yeah, and uh, let me talk about. Yeah, that yeah. For a Let's speak to speak to them about it, and then I can give some uh, give some feedback right. about this. So, for Gathering Storm, uh, Harriet had me use a very limited beta read. She was really worried about the book getting out early, um, and it was really rough not to have access to that tool that I was used to having. 
Um, by Towers of Midnight, I had gotten um, more, got gotten to know the fandom more, uh, particularly some of the, the people who had been long involved in various websites and things. And I went to Harriet and I said, we need beta readers. Um, like for instance, I know for sure that we would, I would have picked up on doing Matt, uh, um, and gathering storm worse if I'd had beta readers. Right. Um, and I just said, I need this. This is a tool that's essential to me. She finally relented and said, all right, you can use, uh, beta readers, but what we have to do is we have to digitally encode um, each of their files separately with separate passwords and then add watermarks and stuff to them. And that's when I got the, the big idea. I said, wait, so we're going to send a different document to each person in the beta read, are we? Which means that I can add something to Matt Hatch's <laughs> document. It doesn't go into anyone else's document um, that is just going to totally pull his leg uh, and get him going. And so uh, with Harriet's approval, I inserted into one of them this brief scene um, that happens because for years at that point, Matt had been saying, you're going to kill Cad Swain, right? You've got to <laughs> kill Cad Swain. You just kill Cad Swain, please. Um, and, you know, unrelenting request for killing Cad Swain. So I decided to give him, uh, give him what he wanted um, and to go a little over the top in it. And so, yeah, this was in there. This is an actual deleted scene. It was never canon. That's the thing that we didn't admit to that you when thing. we were saying that this, but thing. it was <laughs> legitimately written while I was writing Towers of Midnight and was sent in the beta read to Matt Hatch for him to read and respond to. So let me add some texture to this because uh, this is what's so great about this. I'm not joking when I say that I believed the scene the first time through. And you have to understand how much I wanted her to die at the time. And, uh, and so for those of you that are familiar with what this scene looks like, it looks like a bubble of evil moment, right? That is immediately where Brandon had me. And what's funny is he knew exactly how to get me in this, Brandon. You did such a good job, which is you used some metaphysics that I totally would buy into. And so I'm reading this going like, God, Swain, of course, she, yeah, I knew she was evil. Like I watch people in chat do like, this is, this is crazy. And then I'm reading it and going, but that doesn't make any sense. Why would she scream? I'm the dark one. That's absurd. I'm, and it took me out for a moment. But then you put the Beatles in, Brandon. Like, that was so brilliant. Like, I immediately was like, this is a bubble of evil and the greatest bubble of evil that has ever existed. And, 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 you, and I, so I was so in and I couldn't wait to talk to all the other beta readers about this moment. And then there's the piece which Michael does perfectly. When you read it, you don't read it M-A-T-T. -T. But I love that he added that texture to it. So for those of you that are just listening to it and you didn't see it, he's, he's saying M-A-T-T. -T. It's such a great moment. And I'll tell you that my suspension of disbelief did not, like, I was so in. I read it and I was like, they left a T in. I was like, Brandon, that's an easy mistake. They just need to take that out. I'll make a comment. And then I read it again and it literally took me, Brandon, it took me, I think, two times through before I was like, oh, man, he totally pranked me. He totally pranked me. And so the other piece about this that uh, Brandon hasn't shared yet is we were given, I think, maybe a week or two to do the beta read. And when we were given the document, I, I wanted to go through like with a fine tooth comb. And so it took seven days for me to get to this scene seven days of reading the books really closely and just making comments on everything. And seven days that Brandon was just sitting there like, is this dude ever going to get to that spot? <laughs> what were you thinking in that moment? Were you just like, maybe I didn't notice it? I, I, I'm kind of curious. I thought maybe you, like, I had no clue. I'm like, what's going on? Why hasn't he said anything yet? I don't want to spoil the joke by asking him about it. Um, so I just bide bided my time and waited hoping that you hadn't just missed it so, you know. <laughs> yeah so that's uh we talked about doing this uh harriet gave us the permission this is the 10th anniversary pretty much of that moment we thought this would be a fun moment that is this is the genesis of why it just so happened that we wanted to use april 1st for this moment a little light thing that we didn't tell you was this never was canon but it is legitimately something that brandon wrote uh, in the books that was part of Towers of Midnight during the beta read. And so we felt like that would be... That we did delete. It is a deleted scene. It is scene. a deleted scene that was never intended to make it into the book. So 
I hope yes. everyone enjoyed that uh, that that piece of this. Uh, apparently, I didn't realize. I thought all the other beta readers had read this. It wasn't in their documents, and that's why, like everyone's saying that this is god tier trolling in chat. This was uh, this was the most excellent kind of moment. And I'll be honest, for this whole thing that's happened, uh, the Dusty Wheel, Brandon, you being on, us talking about this, the fact that Michael Kramer, I don't know if those of you listened to that, I still, even knowing that this is just like a make-believe scene in essence, I still get the chills when he reads that. Like, <laughs> I listen to that and I'm like, this is the best thing to have come from all of this is uh, now I have an audio recording by the Michael Kramer uh, with this scene so I, I hope all of you enjoyed that piece that was uh, that was a lot of fun welcome to the dusty wheel just hit subscribe and if you want to see more wheel time can <laughs> can we see you next Wednesday no it's terrible <laughs> do us a favor and click that subscribe button and watch that next video over there. It's pretty good. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Discord, Facebook, Instagram. We're all over the place. We'll see you next Watt Wednesday.